Okay, now we know about debits and credits and assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. So let's put it all together into what we call journal entries. You can imagine if we had to write out, we increased cash by $10,000 and credited notes payable by $10,000 we would have all sorts of pages of information that you couldn't make heads of tails out of. If you heard something, that was my dog sneezing. So we have journal entries to uh, save some room and organize our information. Journal entries are just a table where we have specific rows and columns. Our debits always go in the first row of the table and the amount is always on the left. Credits obviously must go in the next row of the table then, and the credit amounts are always on the right. So debits on the left, credits on the right. If you just remember debits and credits, that's the order they go, debits then credits. Um, if you have trouble remembering that, if you want to uh, look at YouTube and look for an accounting rap song, there's a song that sings about this. I'll warn you, it's sort of like the Barney song. It might get stuck in your head, but you probably will remember debits on the left, credits on the right after listening to it. So the journal entry format is just this little table you see. Um, you have the debits go, again, as you see in that kind of left number uh, column and the credits go on the far right. Then in this first um, column, that's where you put the account name. So your debit account names come first, and then you put the amount under the debit. Then the credit account title comes second. My dog has a cold. And you can see you want to indent that just a little bit so that it um, shows um, that it's a credit, and then the credit amount goes over there. So when you're done, again, debits on the left, credits on the right, indent that credit account title, and you're good to go. So we'll do a couple quick examples that we've used before. Buy equipment for cash. That increases the equipment asset, so that's a debit. So we write the debit there in the amount under the debit column. Normally, we don't bother with dollar signs because it just makes it messy. For many of you, you can't tell a dollar sign from a five sometimes. Uh, cash, we want to reduce the cash, which is an asset. So that's our credit. And so that's what our journal entry would look like. The second example is the one we did before where we buy the equipment for 10000 So again, increase our asset with a $10,000 debit. But now we're going to increase our liability. To increase the liability, we credit it. So we're going to have notes payable, indented a little bit, and the credit amount is 10000 So that's what our journal entry would look like. Besides being more organized, the other nice thing about this is you can see your debits always have to equal your credits. So I can look at this really quickly and make sure I've got $10,000 total in each column. Um, if I have a bunch of these, I can total down the column and make sure my debits equal my credit. And the other thing with the whole kind of debit and credit system is that I never have negative numbers. If I want to reduce equipment, I credit it. I never ever have a negative number in my debit or credit column. So we get to increase and decrease. And if you can imagine back in the olden days when we did all this by hand, it would be really easy to lose a little minus sign along the way. So it's a nice way to, again, communicate. An accountant could look at that journal entry immediately and say, oh, we bought equipment for a note payable, and it's really clear um, what's gone on. So now it's your turn. Again, the first set gives you some little hints, and then after that, you're on your own. So have fun. <laughs>